Apart from steam engines and Stirling engines, I'm also very interested in electromechanical engines. And I've been lucky enough to, over the years, collect up quite a few. <coughs> now, this is a pretty good selection here of uh, some of my electromechanical engines. And there's a cross section here. Uh, some of these are scratch built. In fact, I even made one. This one is mine. I designed and built that one. And it actually works, believe it or not. But some of them are also commercially available. <coughs> this is a Hodge, which I've covered before. This electromechanical engine. This is a torch, obviously. And the one behind it is a Wilkemp, which is an American branded, commercially made electromechanical engine. <coughs> now, there are various different types of these engines. But they generally fall into two categories <clears throat> and all of these engines you can see here have something in common they are all powered by solenoids so these are technically solenoid engines every single one of these uses a solenoid in one form or another to provide the mechanical movement i thought while we're on this subject i'll just do a little demonstration i'm sure most of the people that are watching my that watch my youtube videos are well aware of what a solenoid is but just in case there's somebody out there that is is, is unaware we'll uh, we'll do a little demo so what's a solenoid well basically very very simple is a coil of wire which is wrapped around a tube and inside the tube is a core metal rod which is free to slide in and out of the tube okay absolutely free now this is a very crude version that i've knocked up really just to to, to demonstrate this uh, process commercial solenoids normally are blocked off at one end and they quite often have a spring inside so that you'll get a reciprocation motion you put power on the rod pull is pulled in you take power off it springs back out again but for demonstration purposes this is what a solenoid is now if you watch closely, watch the rod. So when I connect power to it, the rod should be drawn into the magnet. There we go. So it's as simple as that. That's exactly what a solenoid is. We'll do that again. There we go. Solenoids are immensely useful. They're used in all sorts of things. And every single one of these engines is powered by a solenoid. But that's not the only type of electromechanical engine. Okay, we couldn't really go on to the next set of engines with, without running at least a couple of these. <clears throat> so I'll put these on for you because they are brilliant. God knows how old this thing is, but it still fascinates me. <clears throat> it uses a mercury switch, which is <laughs> absolutely amazing. And then of course there's my effort. So there you go, two very different solenoid engines in operation. But basically they both work on exactly the same principle. All right, let's move on to the next type of electromechanical engine. So these are the other type of electromechanical engines. And as you can see, there's fewer uh, of them than there is of the solenoid type. These are what I call electromagnet engines. They all run using electromagnets and uh, I'll demonstrate that in a minute. But um, there's another difference, as you can see, pretty much 90% of these engines are commercially made. In fact, the only scratch built one is the one I designed and built, which is this one, this beast over here. And I did several videos on that, if you're interested. Um, believe it or not, four years ago. <laughs> it says on the nameplate 2020, so it's, that engine's already four years old, so. Now, you may say, well, isn't a solenoid an electromagnet? Well, it is, it uses an electromagnet, but a solenoid has a moving part. A traditional electromagnet does not have any moving parts. It has a fixed core. 
and I've got some which I'll show you in a minute. Basically these all work on the same principle. Uh, the electromagnet or magnets are switched on and off and they, they attract an arm and basically that's what creates the movement, the mechanical movement. The arm normally has um, a lever attached to it which operates a crank and that's basically what happens in in, in all of these engines. Uh, you can't really see it. Um, the Empire, the two Empire engines at the back, the B32, the this is a B33, this one and this is a B32. This one uses four electromagnets, this one uses two electromagnets. But they're hidden inside these boxes, so you, you can't see them. Um, obviously, with this Mesco um, engine, this is an American. Well, in fact, all of these are American, obviously, apart from the one I scratch built. This is a Mesco, little Mesco electro, electromagnet engine. And um, the pattern for this was filed in 1910. So this is a probably a very old engine. It still works, still runs. But you can quite clearly see the two large electromagnets here, and they, they pull this plate when they're mag magnetized they pull this plate back towards them and of course that translates into the mechanical movement um, so yeah i mean with mine i've got two electromagnets here that pull this um, uh, pivot lever back and forth which again translates into the mechanical movement probably the easiest ones to <laughs> way to demonstrate this um, are these little Atomotor 107s. These are lovely little toys that were made in America very cheaply um, from about 1947. And they use a single electromagnet coil with, um, a pit, with a pivoting plate, which just goes up and down. And obviously there's a breaker which turns the power on off. Inside the, the little boxes are two D-type cells. That one and that one are how they would have come when they were brand new. This one, I got this one, it only had the, the motor part, it didn't have the box. So I've made up a little box, which obviously is slightly bigger than the originals. But we'll close in on that and you can, you can have a look at that one running. Quite clearly see the little plate being Tracked to the magnet and then release, track to the magnet and then release. And um, but these, are, these are fascinating little tires. There, there are a couple of D-type cells in, in here and that's all it runs off, three volts. It's running off three volts. But fascinating little engines. So, there you go. So here's a couple of small electromagnets, very similar to the two large versions that I've got on my electromagnet engine. And we'll uh, put some power on one of those so you can see in operation, but they have a fixed core. So it's a coil of wire inside a metal tube, which is wrapped around a fixed, fixed metal core. Okay, so I've got the magnet, electromagnet connected up to power supply. We'll turn the power supply on and it should attract the nut. There we go, no problem at all. Now I'll turn the power supply off, and hopefully when the power goes off, there we go. <coughs> so that's basically how electromagnets work. It's as simple as that. And all of these engines work using electromagnets just like this. I mean, some of them are much larger. You see the big coils on the Mesco there. Um, but um, some of them much smaller, a tiny little coil on the atomotors. So yeah, they all work on that same principle. So this has all been a long-winded way <laughs> of getting around to the fact that I have recently acquired another electromagnet motor and it's a bit different. So let's have a look at it. And here it is, this wonderful half beam electromagnet engine. Yeah, I spotted this on eBay, I was really pleased that I did because as you know, I'm <coughs> previously said, I'm very, very uh, much into electromagnet engines. And this one 
was just a little bit different. I had not seen a half beam one before. Now, <clears throat> I think it's fairly obvious that this was scratch built. And I'm also fairly, <laughs> fairly certain that it's very old. But yeah, just, I love it. This is a fantastic concept. I mean, got a cam breaker there. Uh, basically, this wire here goes to the first coil, this one. The, the other end of that coil is connected to this coil, and then that wire there goes through there onto one of those posts. The other post has a wire which connects it to the crankshaft support here, so therefore obviously it's connected to the cam. And then obviously as this rotates, the, um, the cam comes and touches the, <coughs> the arm and makes the circuit. So, uh, yeah, <coughs> lovely, lovely little engine. Now, it does have some issues. The coils are loose. They are, uh, they're, all, they're free to flop around, unfortunately, at the moment. And the frame that holds the beam up is also loose. So the whole lot is, is uh, in fact, very wobbly. <laughs> But when I got it, uh, one of the wires was disconnected, but I checked out the wiring um, of the coil resistance is fine. And now the circuit works as in, as you rotate the wooden flywheel comes into contact with the arm and you get power through to the coils. So it does, it, it is actually working. I also like this, the flywheel. I, I know someone has turned that flywheel out of a piece of wood. And I just, I just really like that. So, obviously I'm gonna do a lot of work on this. I wanna strip it right down, clean it all up, basically restore it to um, full, uh, full working condition. But, I think we might be able to get this thing going. As long as I hold everything in place while I try and run it, I think it should run. Okay, <clears throat> I've got the power connected up. Now I'm gonna to have to get in there and hold things. So I'm gonna use a scriber to hold that down and I'm going to hold that with my finger and hopefully this thing will run Ooh. there we go Ooh. it's a little bit precarious but it is running so I can get around the other side Now bear in mind all the contacts and everything are all dirty and grubby, so, you know, but it is running, just about. There we go. I'll turn the power off. <coughs> I don't want to run it for too long like that. Um, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. What an amazing bit of kit. So um, I think what I'll do is I'll end this video here. If you've seen it as I got it and you've seen it running. And then when I tear it down and start restoring it, I'll, I'll do another video to cover that. I think that'll do for now. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this little video on this wonderful half beam electromagnet engine and uh, as always thanks very much for watching cheers